one CN Kansas City. Gospel 1590. Here's Gospel 106.1 FM. 9 o'clock AM. Welcome to the Morning Glory Show. Turn your volume up and let the word of God pierce your soul. 1590 AM on your radio dial and 106.1 on your FM, pal. Thank you for tuning in to the Morning Glory radio broadcast with Drs. Adam and Adrian Blackstock of Glory Bible Fellowship International Church. Sit back and get ready to receive a word that will transform your life. Good morning, good morning, radio family. It's great to be back in the studio on this great morning. Of course, you're listening to Morning Glory Radio Broadcast, which is the radio ministry of Glory Bible Fellowship International Church, located at 1126 Northeast Delta School Road in Lee Summit, Missouri. Our services are Wednesdays at 7 p.m., and we'd love for you to come out this Wednesday. We're going to talk about that in a second. Uh, And then our Sunday services are at... 9 o'clock with our uh, fellowship breakfast, 9.30 empowerment hour, and then uh, 10.30 with our uh, worship service. We just uh, excited what God's going to do. This Wednesday is the uh, teaching on the feast. We're going to spend a little time today on the feast, but uh, the feast of Sukkot or Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of Booths. There's a whole lot of names for it, but this is the end of the year feast uh, uh, celebration that the people of God need to do. So we're going to teach on it on the 4th, which is tomorrow at 7 p.m. And then on the 11th, we actually will have our annual tent feast so uh, if you want to come and join us call the church at 795-1900 again 795-1900 prophetess we're just going to hit it right now we're going to go right into the word and we're going to start uh we're going to want to remind them about the deliverance meeting oh yeah you're you're right at the end of at the end of the month the last friday of this month it is a a time for you to be there. Um, this is an opportunity for you to trick the enemy and get back your treats. Amen. And so we will. We have some special broadcasts to um, enlighten individuals as the importance of why Christians should not celebrate Halloween. So they'll be coming up in the next two weeks, um, and so that you can be in the be in a posture of how you will know how to pray. Amen. And to correct some things. You know, the thing is, pass out on. When you know better, you do better. Mm. And I do know that this has been something that the church, you know, some churches because they're unaware of what's taking place and what's going on. But, you know, at this day and age, if you really just did your own research, amen, you can really look and see for yourself um, that is a pagan holiday. So regardless of how we try to dress it up, and we need to repent for that Mm. in the body of Christ. All of us, you know. Probably went there, you know, we didn't know any better growing up and all of that. But when God enlightens you to things, then we need to change for that. Amen. Amen. So, uh, prophets, what about these festivals and these fall festivals and these uh, it's All Saints Day? What do we call it? All Saints Day, a Saints, Ho- Saints Eve. I mean, we call it all these different. What about those? It, it doesn't. It doesn't matter just because you change the name is like this morning for those who the Anton LaVey, he is the one that created the church of Satan that started out in California. And there's a poster that I actually post up this morning and it has his picture on it. And it says, thank you Christians for allowing your children to celebrate and worship the devil on this one particular day. That's, that's like, it's a strong indictment, mm-hmm. you know, or what have you. And so we, the church need to wake up rest and, and know that there's, you know, we know that there's evil in the world. So why would we want to associate with evil? But at the same time, we want to pray to God and say, save me from the evil that is that is taking place within the world. But you're participating in it because you want to have fun. You're dressing your children up in gory costumes. And, you know, God, the Bible speaks very clearly on not to bring a cursed thing in your home. You have no idea the things that function and work behind the scenes. So this is a time that we need to waken up as believers as lead you know as leaders and i'm just glad that that god in his grace and mercy that when we when we started a church we never there was something that we we never did we never participated in um at all in reference to that and so i'm just doing a clarion call and then god based on our faith of just stepping out and not doing it 
um, God put me as I started working with bringing people at, out of satanic worship and those that suffer from satanic ritual abuse. And this is what you do. There are children that suffer. They, they have no choice. Their parents put them in this. Yeah. And so we have firsthand information um, from that. What do they need to do just prior to the deliverance meeting itself? Should they fast? Should they be reading you stuff? Know, you know, the thing is about we've been doing these victory deliverance campaign, but the one for October, because this month is a is the high is what we we know that God has it as his high holy days. And that's why it's important that you, we are talking about the feast of the Lord, because this is a time where God releases his protection over for us. But if you don't know that and tap into that. And now we have the kingdom of darkness with, with Wiccans and satanic worshipers. They are for the this is their highest month. They're doing rituals. And, you know, this is not some gory TV. They would literally be sacrificing babies. And that's the reason why a lot of human, a lot of homeless people are missing during this time. This stuff is real. Mm. So you think you're watching it on, why do you think they put it in the movies? That's to desensitize you, to make you think you're watching a good, scary movie. Satan is showing you everything that he's doing. The, the Illuminati and the things that, you know, these rappers and these high class individuals, there are things that they have to do to be able to be at that level. Amen. And that's what mm. I children look at that. If you want to, if you want to sell your soul to Satan, he will, he will promote you. Let me mm. put it that way. So you need to do it. You need to t talk to your children. You know, even in the schools, we never allowed our children to participate. We had them to go to the library and told them that our children were not going to participate in any of the things that they were doing associated around the fall festival, or whatever. But Jesus Christ is the Lord of the harvest. So being in deliverance meeting and it, why it's so important. Maybe you don't have some things, but we don't understand Pastor Adam that when those incantations and that that stuff goes out in the atmosphere, we it, it still impacts us. We feel it if you for those of us that don't know what to do with it. And mm -hmm. so being in deliverance member help break some of those things off you. Help close the doors when you may have somebody read your palm, um, associate with a Ouija board, did a you know, stick your finger. I mean, all those things, God's going to come in and cleanse. And oh, purifies. okay. Hey, man. So they should be fasting. They should be reading their I, word. I call it the, this is the prophet's deliverance fast the day before, the day of, and the day after. Come in a posture, and God does the rest. He will meet you there. Amen. Amen. Okay, so three-day fast. Good. All right. Now, we're... Uh, Please, what what date is that again? What that's the last Friday of the month, Friday right? That's the twenty seventh. Twenty seventh, October twenty seventh. Okay. Doors open at six thirty, and we will start at seven o'clock p.m. Oh, amen, amen. Okay, so go with me, radio family, uh, to the book of Leviticus. We're gonna read Leviticus uh, twenty three, uh, and we're gonna read just a little bit of it, and then we're gonna go to Deuteronomy sixteen, and then we're gonna go to Exodus. So I need you to stay with me, get a pen and paper, write these scriptures down if you don't have your Bible in front of you. This is a touch point so you can hear what God is saying. It says that in Leviticus twenty three and thirty three, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be a feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. On the first day shall be a holy convocation, you shall do no several work therein. Seven days uh ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, and on the Eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you, and you shall offer an offering made by the fire unto the Lord. It's a solemn assembly, and you shall do no several work therein. These are the feasts that we talk about, all the feasts that we've been teaching all over the years. These are the feasts of the Lord, which you proclaim to be holy convocations. To offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering, a meat offering, a sacrifice, a drink offering, everything upon these this day. Okay, so now in Deuteronomy 16, and we're going to read 16, 13 through 16. Amen. The Bible says, Thou shalt observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days after that thou hast gathered in thy corn and thy wine. And thou shalt rejoice in the feast, thy sons, thy daughters, manservant, and thy maidservants, the Levites, the strangers, the fatherless, the widows that are within the gates. That's everybody. Seven days shalt thou keep a solemn feast unto the Lord thy God in the place which the Lord shall choose, because the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thy increase and all thy works of thy hand. Therefore, thou shalt surely rejoice. Remember, God will always tell you there's appointed places and appointed time. We know the appointed time because he puts it, we put it on God's calendar every year. Amen. This appointed time is um, 
uh, October 4th through the 11th. And the, the what's the appointed place? The appointed place is Glory Bible Fellowship International Church. Why? Because uh, we've been doing this uh, since our foundation and we 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 are born into it. At least I am born into it. Prophetess is grafted in. I always believe that she was more Jewish than I was. But uh, uh, <laughs> right, right. There, there is a point of place where you can understand that you, prophetess, understood the things of God, especially in this area of the three feasts. And we're going to talk about that. Amen. But uh, and uh, you kind of say, Pastor, this is you. You Jewish, right? What, what, what? Why don't you go and, and teach what you already know, right? And, and I said, well, you know, you know, I, I, I'm African American and I'm a, a Jewish American, so you know, uh, I consider myself more black than Jewish at the time, and and that's I mean, this twelve, thirteen years ago we're talking, and and so I was like, well, um, all right, baby, I, you force, you twist my arm, but then I realized, man, this is this is God. This is not Jewish. Amen. Right. That's what got. That's what got me. Is that this was? I recognized that it wasn't the Jewish things. It was the things of God. It was just the church had pulled them out, or or not responded to the call of God Amen. to do them. So I said, Well, look, we yeah, we'll do these. Because I want to say this so the callers be, the callers will understand is that you know I'm originally from Miami. Pastor Adams was from New York, and then he went to school at University of Miami. In Miami, we met and we moved here. My even here I am, this African American girl grew up in the housing projects of Miami, Florida. Okay. Mm-hmm. The richness in this land because it I didn't start pursuing my walk and everything with God until the Lord brought me to Kansas City. This is how just who would have thunk it for me to go and the Lord start giving me revelation in reference to the Israels. I remember, and the Jews, I remember God speaking to me and I was in this prayer group and I was like, why is he speaking to me? I'm like, and that's why I went and said, listen, I said, this should, you should have this burden. But God gave me a burden for the Jews and he began to reveal himself through the Bible. And, I, you know, we're looking back and I just want to say, wasn't it good that you listened to your wife? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, Cause I, just imagine all the all the people that would have not been blessed if yeah. you were just said, "Woman, I'm not listening to you." Man, man, but just <laughs> uh, just think about. It. Let me let me help you out. Right, the the Bible is clear. The voice of wisdom is a female voice. Right? The, um, the Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs, seek after wisdom, seek her out. Mm-hmm. So uh, when you were talking, some men may get a, uh, may not understand this, but that wasn't that wasn't necessarily you talking. Amen. That was the voice of wisdom talking. That was God talking. So men, this is one for you, free one. Not every time your 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 wife was talking to you is it a, for a nag. It could <laughs> be the wisdom of God talking. Amen. Amen. So then it goes on. It says uh, seven days. I should keep the three times. Or verse sixteen. Three times in a year shall all males appear before the Lord thy God in a place which he shall choose. The Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is Pesach, Passover. And then the Feast of Weeks, which is Shavuot, which is uh, Pentecost. And then the Feast of Tabernacles, which is called Sukkot, the end gathering. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessings of the Lord thy God, which he has given thee. Prophetess, I know you're going to take them to Exodus because they get a lot during the Feast of Tabernacles. When they give into this blessing, what they receive is supernatural. Why don't you uh, help the, our radio audience out? Okay, For the sake of time, let's look. And here's the thing that we have to understand, that this is just God's word. We don't have to add to it. We don't have to take away from it. And this is one of the reasons why it's overlooked, because unless you have that messianic or jewish background you're not you really got going to touch these scriptures amen and so like first of all i want you to understand that these are the feasts of the lord this is where erroneous teaching got and saying that these are the feasts of the jews let's go with the bible it's just like when we read and says all of a sudden until i read the bible for myself i begin to wake up and say uh where does it say in the bible that adam and eve ate an apple (laughs) it doesn't say that Amen. Mm. And so it said, these are the feasts of the Lord. So in Exodus 23, verse 14 says, each year you must celebrate three festivals in my honor. And that's what we do. Um, past, we do the Passover. We do um, um, the you know, Pentecost. Pentecost. And then we over where these names. So if you ever hear them, because this is the largest 
um, feast and festival is Sukkot. You hear in gathering and you hear about booths. Yeah. Or, okay? or tabernacles. Or tabernacles. Okay. And that means to, to gather. So this is the largest one, as Pastor Al was saying, that it will not be missed. About 66% of the people will make sure they will leave and not miss this. Then you go down to verse 17. You go down to verse 17. God comes back and he says it again. At these three times each year, every man, which means humankind in Israel, must appear before the sovereign of uh, the sovereign Lord. And and there's a promise here that the only way you're going to receive this is if you participate in this in this offering during this time. Okay, and we're not telling you something. I mean, we see the miracles that takes place and there in it that's in here. We're starting at verse twenty. Can I can I read this real quick? Okay, uh, I'm says, in the NLT. What you read? Yeah, in the King James, right? It goes, uh, thou shalt keep the feast on leavened bread seven days. In verse sixteen, Exodus twenty three, sixteen says, And the feast of the harvest, the first fruits of the labor which thou shalt sow in the field, that is uh Shavuot or Pentecost. Look at this. And the feast of in gathering, which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy labor out of thy field. This is important because Amen. this is uh, the largest of the three feasts. Well, well, preacher, you're telling me that Passover or uh, during a resurrection season, that's not the most important feast. Well, uh, not uh, here, the reason why, because in gathering is the total uh, harvest, the biggest harvest. Amen. Right? That's why That's why they took it during this time. It was the biggest harvest. You harvested all year, and this would be the the end gathering or the end gathering when you're gathering everything in. Go ahead. And Pastor, we have to understand God moves in the, he, he, when God is dealing with us, it's, it's in the natural and spiritual. Come on. And so if we're talking about this in gathering, this harvest, this is what's happening this time. And we got to understand individuals that we, we just came out of one of the holiest days. We just went through all this. So the, so the ground is ripe. Amen. And so we look at the vineyard, we talk about even yourselves, your vessels. And so now you can be able to come before for God because before God because you've been in His presence you're you you're repented and all of that. So we're at verse twenty. Now here and and, and I I just I just like the word Pastor. It just, it's just plain and simple. You don't have to get all deep. The, even the heading in my on my iPad it says a promise of the Lord's presence. Hmm, go ahead. This is what it says. That's good. It says, see, I am sending an angel before you to protect you and on your journey and lead you safely to the place I have prepared for you. Pay close attention to him and obey his instruction. Do not rebel against him or he for he is my representative and he will not forgive your rebellion. Get out of rebellion. But if you are care if you carefully to obey him, following all my instructions, then I will be an enemy to your enemies. Listen to what God says. He said, I'll be an enemy to your enemies. And I will oppose those who oppose you. For my angel will go before you and bring you into the land of the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Jebusites. Those, all those isms, those, all those isms, schism, issues, and all those things that you have prophetically. Amen? So you may live there, and I will destroy them completely. There are some things that we keep dealing with over and over and over again, and God said, I will destroy them completely. You must not worship the gods of these nations or serve them in any way or imitate their evil practices. That's one mm -hmm. of the things God spoke to me when I moved to Kansas City, and I began to understand. He said, don't go into the land and do what they're doing. So I, that, that means whatever evil, what was not of God, don't go there and pick up that practice. Amen. Yeah, yeah. The people of God shouldn't be mixing with Philistines. Yes. Right. I mean, that's that's really what it is. Right. Don't be unequally. yoked. And in layman's terms, the heathen man. Yeah. Unequally yoked. We should not be unequally yoked with the, especially with a non-believer. Go ahead. Keep okay. preaching. I you must not it. worship the gods of these nations or serve them in any way or imitate the evil practices. Instead, mm, Halloween, instead, you must utterly destroy them and smash their secular pillars. You must serve only the Lord your God. If you do. I will bless you with food and water, and I will protect you from illness. And I like the King James Version because it says sickness and disease. Mm. There will be no miscarriages or infertility in your land, and I will give you long, 
full lives. That we, we and we see that people deal with infant by having a child, and we knew one thing that was not an issue. They had so many children and children. This is the answer right here. So you'll be, you'll, your land will be fertile. And you yes. will be fertile. And oh, we yes. have had interviews that believe to have, to believe to have a child. And I ain't did nothing. I just looked. I said, I remember one time being an hour and this young lady was believing to have a, uh, a child or what have it. Ended up having twins. And I just looked at her and said, did you not put a fee seed in? And she said, yes. I said, it's done. And sure enough, they had two babies. Yeah. Amen. Uh, that's how the twins came out. <laughs> and the there will be, they got double for the trouble. Yeah. And there will be no miscarriage or infertility in your land. And I will give you long, full lives. Come on, long, full lives. I will send my terror ahead of you and create panic among all the people who lands you invade. I will make all your enemies turn and, t and run. I will send terror ahead of you and drive out the Hittites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, but I will not drive them out in a single year because the land will become desolate and the wild animals will multiply and threaten you. That's the God does, you know, when you're walking with him, and that's what we want, this quick fix, little by little. He said he knows what he's doing. He knows when you're ready for that deliverance, amen. He knows when you're ready to turn. He said, I'm going to do this little by little. I'm going to take care of this. He says, I will drive them out little at a time until your are Population has increased enough to take possession of the land. Sometimes we step out before him. That's why God says that I will the devour before you about us being titles. He's and these these feet pass Adam tie in with you, uh, uh, us being a tither. Mm, come on. Uh, but we, when God's talking about the offering, these are the three offers he's talking about. He's not talking about that little $10 and $5, mm. those little offers. Those are all well and good. We can claim a 100-fold return on them. But this, these are the three feasts. And this is the time, past Adam, that you, we know that God is seated on the throne. And I remember when he, he came to me and speak to me. He says, he says, Adrian, if there was any time that I would get up off my throne, these are the three times I will. Why? Because I made a covenant with my people and even those of us that have grabbed the end that I will be near to them. There is such a high presence of angelic. If you would just tap into the spirit realm and just you can feel the presence of God like never before because we're under an open window right now. That window is going to close come on the 11th. Amen. So you want to get your seed in the ground. Amen. You go to the website. Go to the app. Amen. And put it in. Come to believe God. Amen. I, I, I love doing this time because I love Second Corinthians 9 and 10. He says, I will give seed to the sower. He didn't say I was going to give seed to the one in need. Everybody's all in need. Amen. Look out among you. We got homeless everywhere. He said, I will give seed to the one that was sowed. I will increase that seed sown. I will increase your righteousness. I will even increase your food. Amen. I remember writing in my Bible, I wanted to stop going to the organic store. Amen. But I did that years ago. Look, I shop at the organic store. Mm. Hallelujah. I have nutrients whole food nutrients that i'm able to take because i wasn't i it was fight the food was so high back then i didn't think i can be able to do that but look where i'm at right now hallelujah 13 years later and seeing the hand of god god says come to believe him we have we have magnificent testimony we have single parents that that God just come in and move on their behalf. They don't believe God for uh, just a hundred dollars. They believe God. God, I want to come for you for a, with a thousand dollars. See, that's a miracle because then nobody can get the glory for that but you. Amen. When you look at your checkbook and it got zero, but you believe in God because you want to come before Him with your best. Mm, Hallelujah. What are you teaching right now? The, the black side. We challenge ourselves. Um, I said, whatever we gave, we gave last. The, whatever it was last year, we want to increase that. Hallelujah. So you don't have to be mad. You don't have to be, because I'm not concerned about what people think of me. I'm not concerned about if people want to talk about. It. This is what I live by. Amen. I am on the side of the Lord. Don't be concerned about individuals. Let God fight your battles for you. Let him even fight the devil. Hallelujah. For on your behalf, because all of heaven is backing you up. Just stand on the word of God. Take this promise. This promise will not come back again until our 2018 of March, but get in right now. Some of you are dealing with sickness and disease, and, and some of you don't know how to work your faith. But this is a promise from God. He says, only thing you have to do is bring your best before me during this time. And he said, I remove sickness and disease from you. I increase your bread and your water. That means bread represents um, prosperity in the name of Jesus. Your water, a greater measure of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. D don't miss what God is doing. You have until 
October the 11th to get your seat in. Mail it in if you have to. 1126 Northeast Delta School Road. Hallelujah. Lisa, Missouri, 64064. Go to the website, gbfic.org, or get the app on your smartphone, for, uh, phone, amen, and get your seat in the ground and have expectation. Believe for the greatest miracles, amen? Amen. This is important because you said something, and, you know, when you give during Passover, right, that 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 last uh, that feast lasts until the next feast, which is Shavuot, which is Pen- Pentecost, right? You give then, right during the uh, and then Pentecost lasts you until the fall, which is uh, in gathering, right? Which is uh, to tabernacle. Well, tabernacle is gonna last you all the way over. Amen. That's how God does. God bless you to you. The, yeah, this is the one that's uh, perpetual all until uh, March thirtieth or January or April first. So that's the, the the long one that's the long blessing so you want to be in the long blessing in order to do that you have to sow during that harvest season we got one minute left we want to give you again our address for tonight um, for tomorrow night and for Thursday uh, next Wednesday is a uh, 1126 Northeast Delta School Road in Lee Missouri of course you're listening to the morning glory radio broadcast with prophetess Adrian and Pastor Adam, and of course, you'll always know that when you hear our radio broadcast, you hear these famous words, that Jesus is Lord. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, feel free to partner with us by sowing a seed at gbfic.org or mailing a check to Morning Glory at 1126 Northeast Delta School Road in Lee Summit, Missouri, 64064. If you need special prayer of any kind, please feel free to call us at 816-795-1900. You wanted to see me? Yes, please, have a seat. So here's the thing. When this company brought you on, we took a chance on you. You didn't have that four-year college degree we typically look for. Right. But we gave you a shot anyway. And since then, you've worked incredibly hard and given it your all. Thanks. You've been an important asset to the team, but... I don't think you can be an intern here anymore. We want to hire you. You're you're serious? Absolutely. Find your next great employee. Introduce yourself to the grads of life. Who are they? Talent worth knowing about. Young adults of unique determination and experience. An ideal fit for your company in an entry-level position, internship, or even mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. I won't let you down. I know. Don't miss out on a resource many innovative companies have already discovered. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool.